Sunday, August 15th. I know that, no, 14th. I know that because it is my stepmother's birthday. We have arrived here at the Bellagio and I am about half interested in playing poker today. Normally on the nights where I'm not really geared up to play, bad things happen. But we're gonna do a mind over matter thing today. And we're gonna make it work. Good things are gonna happen today. Let's hope. Let's just go ahead and get the worst played hands out of the way quickly. With action folded to me in my small blind, I elect to open 4 or 5 all suit to $30 against an unknown big blind. 4 or 5 all suit is close, but normally not a standard open in this spot without some sort of qualifying information on the big blind. I don't have that, thus this should be a fold. As played however, the big blind calls and we're off to a flop. Deuce of clubs, three of diamonds, nine of hearts. Well, the poker gods have shined down on my horrible open and rewarded me with a straight draw. I continue for about two thirds pot and the villain calls again. The turn pairs the nine and here comes my second mistake. I bet full pot on this paired board and our villain wastes no time with moving all in for about $700 more. Well, that's not good. We fold and he shows us ace nine offsuit, which means we would have definitely gotten stacked on an ace river, so maybe his shove did us a favor. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. About 30 minutes later, the cutoff opens and we decide to call from the big blind holding ace-4 offsuit. The only information I know about this guy is he's getting ready to leave. In fact, his empty rack arrives before the flop even comes out. We see a flop of ace of clubs, three of diamonds, four of hearts and start with a check. Our exiting villain see bets for $30 and with the board so heavily in our favor, we know we're going to continue. Holding top two pair, we decide that that continue is going to look like a check raise to $120. From his position, our opponent could potentially have a lot of those big sexy Broadway aces and call off multiple streets. He could also have some draws and do the same. In this hand, however, it appears he has nothing and folds really quickly. In the next hand, action folds to us on the button and we open ace jack of hearts to $30 and the big blind defends. The big blind checks the ace force deuce two club board and although we like having flop top pair with a decent kicker, we aren't fist bumping anyone about this board texture. We bet $20 and the big blind calls again. The turn five of clubs isn't great. When the big blind checks here, I could go either way with checking or betting, and I'd mostly check. However, this particular big blind? I've seen him call down pretty lightly before, so I continue with the $50 bet, and again, he calls. The River Seven of Diamonds is most likely a blank, and the big blind checks once more. I now bet $100, hoping to get value from weak aces, and with this particular villain, he might also call with hands like pocket nines or eights or maybe even sixes. Whatever it is that he had, he decided it wasn't worthy of my river price, and he folds. About 15 minutes later, we find ourselves in the big blind with the always powerful 9-4 of diamonds. The button opens to 30 and the small blind calls, and we slide in an overcall with this questionable hand. 
we flop bottom pair on queen 8 4 rainbow in the small blind checks. Out of position versus the original opener, we check as well and we're prepared to call some light c bets if it comes to that, but he chooses to check behind. If I had to go on the deck and pick a turn card, the 10 of diamonds wouldn't be an awful choice. We now have two draws to go along with our pair and the small blind checks again. Still out of position versus the original opener, so we can't go crazy here. We bet $50 and surprisingly get no resistance. Both players fold. About three minutes after my exhibition of mastery with the 9-4 suited, we find ourselves on the button with a much more standard holding. Under the gun opens to 30 and the cutoff calls and we raise it up from the button with, ugh, ace-king offsuit to $140. The under the gun player, who should have a pretty strong range, finds the call and the cutoff folds and we are off to the flop, heads up. Queen, deuce, three, all clubs. Why? Why can't I just flop the nuts with this hand one time like I see the guys do it on TV? Is that asking too much? Or can I at least not flop this monotone craziness? Under the gun leads with a check and I see bet to $100 with designs on most likely just giving this hand up if I encounter even a whiff of aggression. The under the gun player calls. The blandness of this board continues on the turn three of diamonds and when the under the gun player checks again, I check behind. This hand concludes when the river six of hearts appears. The under the gun player checks one more time and me betting serves little purpose. My hand is good enough that it just wins, sometimes. This happens to be one of those times when the under the gun player tables king jack of hearts. <laughs> This table was playing extremely, extremely passive, which allowed me to get away with doing some things that I wouldn't normally do at other tables. Like here, the under the gun player opens, the low jack calls, and I find a flat in the hijack with pocket threes. Normally, this is a pretty easy fold, but in a game like this, I end up having a lot more opportunities to see multiple streets and realize equity than in other games. We go to the flop three ways. Honestly, the rest of the hand is pretty inconsequential as every street just checks down. The under the gun player doesn't show when the low jack tables the pocket tens that he chose not to raise with preflop and we happily fold our pocket threes. So although we didn't win this hand, we did get to leverage the passive nature of this table to see all three streets. So that's kind of a win, I guess. <laughs> Our reward for losing $30 with pocket threes was to pick up pocket kings the very next hand. Due to a player posting the hand before, we are effectively the hijack again here. We open to $30, everyone folds, and we win $15 from the blinds cutting our pocket threes losses in half. So I guess that's something. hour or so after winning with pocket kings to avenge our loss with pocket threes, we again step a bit out of line, this time from the small blind. 
Here we open 8-6 offsuit when action is folded to us, and we are called by the big blind. We check the king 10 5 2 heart board as we literally have nothing going on here. The big blind checks as well. The deuce of clubs puts two clubs on the board, and although we don't have a pair, nor a draw, we decide to bet $40 because, well, our hand is trash. And we can't just show up on the river with eight high and expect to start making moves because by then it's just too late. The big blind apparently wasn't interested either as he folds. We're seven handed here and I open ace 10 offsuit to $30 and only get called by the small blind. Heads up, we see a board of 10, nine, nine rainbow and the small blind checks. I could find a continuation bet here easily, but I roll a check and we continue to the turn. The ten of clubs turn appears and the small blind checks again. Now I bet $50 with my newly found full house. And from the outside looking in, it might be really hard for the small blind to believe that I have a full house. There aren't really many hands under the gun that contain a 10 that would check the flop. Maybe picking up on this, he check raises me, but his sizing is strange. He makes it $100. I slide in the additional $50 and make the call. The river jack of clubs isn't my favorite, as the small blind's check raise is repping a 10. With my under the gun open, the tens in the small blind's calling range are ace 10 suited, which I block, king 10 suited, queen 10 suited, jack 10 suited, and sometimes 10 nine suited. Sure, he could have flopped quads or river jacks full, but I'm much less concerned with those due to the flop and turn action. What I am concerned about is jack 10 suited. Jack 10 suited makes sense, and looking at the suits on the board, it's the only suited jack 10 combo available. The small blind now leads for $250, which is about pot. His sizing makes me raising tough and most likely an overplay. I'm obviously not folding, so I call, and he shows me king queen offsuit, which was a flop gut shot that rivered a straight, which, fortunately for me, isn't strong enough to beat my full house. In this, the most pivotal hand of this session, the low jack opens to $30, I call from the cutoff with ace nine of clubs and both blinds come along. A four way pot. Both blinds check the jack of clubs, seven of clubs, king of hearts flop and action is back on the original razor. He bets $60 into the $120 pot, I call with my nut flush draw and the small blind comes along. The big blind has had enough and gets out of the way. The turn four of clubs gives me the nuts, and this is where the hand goes way off the rails. The small blind checks, the low jack original razor checks, and I bet $160. The small blind now goes deep into the tank, and when he comes out, he slides $460 into the middle. Now the action is on the low jack, and he also goes into the tank and tanks much, much longer than the small blind. With a stack of about $900, he decides to flat the small blind's $460 check raise. As you can imagine, I'm pretty confused. Confused or not, it doesn't really matter. These two have basically pot committed themselves, and I'm holding the nuts. I shove, covering both of them. <laughs> the small blind tank calls, and the low jack begrudgingly calls as well, and we now have a three-way all-in. We elect to run it once, and I'm pretty sure I just need to dodge the board pairing, if anything. The three of clubs hits the river. The low jack shows pocket kings for a flop top set and the small blind monks. Secretly, I use telepathy to thank the small blind for that turn check raise as that river three of clubs would have killed all the action. And I felt two players and rake in a 3k pot.
quite literally the very next hand and both players from the previous hand have quickly rebought. I slide in a $30 open from the hijack with 10-7 of diamonds and the button calls as does the small blind. Opening with this hand and flopping queen of diamonds, nine of hearts, eight of hearts doesn't suck and when the small blind checks to me, I honestly don't know why I didn't bet here. I should be betting here. This is a mistake. I missed the bet. In other words, I checked and the button checked behind. The turn nine of diamonds adds a flush draw to my flopped open-ended straight draw and now the small blind leads for $40 and both myself and the button call. The small blind says, uh-oh, flush man coming in. Flush man coming in. <laughs> I guarantee you I do not have a flush. Flush man coming in. <laughs> and I assured him that I didn't have a flush. That assurance was null and void on the rivered five of diamonds, yet the small blind continued for $120. Although I now have a 10 high flush, my hand is medium strength on this paired board, especially with a player behind me. I call on the button folds. The small blind tables jack 10 of spades for a flop straight, and I win back to back hands with a flush. The run good, it's back. <laughs> It is Sunday night, mid-session, update time here at the Bellagio. As you can tell, it's dark outside. I'm guessing it's probably about nine o'clock, so I have to find the one area outside by Bellagio Ballet that had light. Let's talk about what's going on in this session. Um, if you were to ask me 20 minutes ago how my session's going, I would have said, hmm, meh. Uh, I had been in the game for maybe three and a half, four hours. I think I was up $12 and I had absolutely nothing going on. Played very little hands, almost no hands made it to the river. It was just kind of a boring session. But then something crazy happened. Your boy, that's me, tried to punt off his stack with ace four of hearts. I didn't get that recorded, but through the powers of animation, I can probably recreate it. I know that Ace-4 suited is mostly a 3-bet and fold here versus an under-the-gun straddle, but I don't care. I want to play this hand, and I'm going to win this pot, right here and right now. I have Ace-4, but if I squint, it looks like Aces. I raise. $450 to go. Well, we made this bed. You only live once, that's the motto. YOLO. I'm all in. 1.3K. folded kings? How'd he fold kings? Am I the best? Admit it. Say it. Say it. You have to say it. All right. After winning that hand with ace four versus pocket kings, I proceeded to almost triple up when I turned the nut flush versus an unknown hand in top set. Uh, a couple hands after that, I turned another smaller flush. So it's kind of been a wild last hour in which my stack went from about 1700 to maybe a little over five grand. Uh, the plan now is to probably go in, give it maybe another two and a half, three hours, and then get out of here. That's the plan. If the game stays good though, we'll be here all damn night. All damn night. So wish me continued success.
after the mid-session update, the table went into a lull for quite a while. The player I felted when he flopped top set of kings won a monster pot, and now there were a few big stacks at the table. And the table which was passive before, became even more passive with stacks so deep. With so many chips on our table compared to the three other 510 games going, some of the Bellagio regs started table changing to our game when seats opened, which made the game even tighter. Here the low jack opens to $30 and I put in a 3 bet to $100 with pocket queens from the hijack, and only the low jack calls. Together we see a flop of jack 4-6 with two clubs and the low jack checks it over to me. Not a lot to worry about here and I bet $70 and get a quick call from the low jack. The turn brings a three of diamonds and the low jack checks again. I'm not sure my queens can get three streets of value here, so I check it back with plans to bet the river unless something disastrous happens. Not quite disastrous, but close. The five of clubs hits the river, filling in the flush and putting a one liner to a straight on board. The low jack now tanks for a bit and checks. Again, a strong hand relegated to a medium strength one by the river. I tank for a bit myself, deciding that if I bet here, how often I'll get called by a hand worse than mine, and I settle on a check. I do end up taking this one down with my queens when the hijack tables king jack of hearts, which is a hand that might have called a turn or river value bet, so I probably lost some value checking turn and river. garage hot 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 it is hot as hell in this Bellagio parking garage so we are gonna get out of here uh, let's wrap this thing up I did that mid-session update probably about 90 minutes ago and since then uh, nothing really happened I think I played three or four different hands table dynamics changed drastically as people came and left and uh, I just wasn't feeling it it's time to go uh, in for 15 out for like 58 and some change um, which is an uh, incredible session here, the Bellagio 510 game. And overall, the session was just mostly folding. And then I won two or three big hands, and here we are. As we sit right now, we are melting in this Bellagio parking garage. So I got to get out here. I got to get in this air condition. Um, if you like the vlog, like the vlog, leave me a comment, and uh, subscribe. And I'll probably respond. Maybe, probably, eventually. Until then, I'll catch you next time. Unless I melt. Bye. Today is uh, Monday, September, I don't know, Labor Day. Whatever Labor Day is. So we got a new phone. It's the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 thing. You know, one of these foldy, Using this new phone, I am not quite yet sure about how to accurately capture my whole card. The beginning of this vlog might be a mess. Y'all want to see all the outtakes, fun facts, and behind the scenes craziness? Well, here we go. Yeah. 
am I the best? Admit it. Say it. Say it. You have to say it. Am I the best? Say it. Admit it. Say it. Say it. You have to say it. But overall, the session went very well. Uh, in for 15, out for 58.02? Maybe it was 58.04. Maybe it's 58.28. Something like that. Um, but what we're gonna do now, so I had to find the one area outside by Valley. After winning that hand, a score versus Pocket Kings, I then proceeded to almost triple up um, with the, almost triple up with Ace Nine of Clubs. What can I talk? <laughs> All right. Um, and things are going well. In, and things are going well, so it's been, and things are going well, so it's been kind of a uh, wild last hour. What we're gonna do now is we're probably going, so it's kind of been a wild last hour. Um, I, so it's kind of been a lot, blah, blah. So it's kind of been a wild last hour and when my mornings are the same I don't want to play this game let me go back